So in this section, we're just going to do some calculations for working capital. And we're going to do it in a bit of detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up our fixed costs into various subcategories. And we're going to do the same thing for our variable costs. So let's just assume that uh, our fixed costs were given to us in the model, which was just this number here, half a billion dollars. And we saw that these remained flat over time. And also, we were also given information about our variable costs. It's $600 million, and that also remained flat because our production remained flat over time. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to decompose this into various subcategories. So let's just assume that salaries and wages made up 50% of this fixed cost number and uh, electricity 20% and then just to make it add up to 100%, we're just going to do 10, 10, 10. So we sat down with our costing departments and we established after some analysis that this is the breakdown of this half a billion number. We can do the same thing with our variable costs. And then let's do 20% and 10% and 10%. So then we have our breakdown for our fixed and our variable costs. So let's then again sit down with each of these departments and we will analyze how long it takes us to pay each of these different stakeholders. So after our employees have done a month's worth of work, they get paid immediately. So the amount of time that the salaries that are due to our laborers, uh, the amount of time that that money that is due to them sits in our bank account before we pay them is zero days because we effectively pay them at the end of the month when their wages are due. So I'll just put the zero days there. Let's assume that we can pay our electricity bill within a week, so five business days, or let's just use seven calendar days. And then we'll just assume the same for our consumables. Let's say we have um, these uh, supplies that supply us with ball mills, and we have to pay them within five working days. Uh, same with the uh, storage costs, the warehouses that we rent, we have to pay within one working week or seven uh, seven calendar days and let's just assume that our other suppliers are quite small so we've negotiated to pay them after say two weeks so uh, after they've provided a, a service to us we have two weeks before we have to pay them so that money that is due to them sits in our bank account for 14 days on the processing side um, let's assume that the processing costs is uh, largely relate, related to reagents and uh, labor as well. And we are on a very lean, just-in-time inventory model, and we also pay our um, external service providers immediately after they do the job. Or just for argument's sake, let's say we pay them the next day. So that money that is due to them sits in our bank accounts for one business day or one calendar day. On the mining side, we pay our contract miners. So these are companies that do the mining for us on a contract basis. Let's say we have to pay them within two weeks. So I'll just put there 14 calendar days. Shipping, let's say we pay our shipping providers after five business days and the same for our packaging. So now we have sat down and we have ascertained how long it takes us to pay people that do work for us. Let's calculate how much money then is sitting in our bank accounts that is due to external service providers. So salary and wages, okay, out of half a billion dollars, 50% of that will be due to salaries and wages. So that's $250 uh, million dollars that's due to laborers, but we pay them immediately. So the amount of time that this money actually sits in our bank accounts and doesn't sit with our employees is zero. So the working capital effect of that is zero dollars. What I'm going to do, because I'm going to drag this formula down and across, is then I'm just going to lock the row here. I'm going to lock the column here. Uh, shift. 
I'm going to lock the row here. And then I can drag that across. And then I'm going to do the same thing, um, but let me actually just do, uh, do it from first principles to illustrate the point here. So for electricity costs, I have out of half a billion dollars, 20% of that is attributable to electricity. So in one year, I spend about $100 million on electricity. So at any given point in time, I have to pay the electricity service provider after one week. So the money that is due to them sits in my account for one week, and I can use that money for any other corporate purposes that I see fit for one week. So that money translates into seven days out of 365 days. So in 365 days, I have uh, accumulated an expense of 100 million. So if I divide that by uh, 365 days, it'll give me the amount of electricity I consume per day. I multiply that by seven, uh, and then it'll just give me an idea of what seven days worth of that accounts payable is that is sitting in my bank account. So this gives you an answer of $1.92 million at any given point in time during the year, instead of being in the hands of the electricity service provider is sitting in my bank account and I can use this money to do wh whatever I wish within the company, only for seven days, of course. So I'm just going to lock the, um, I'm gonna lock the column here. I'm gonna lock the row here and I'm gonna lock the column here. So you can do the exact same exercise for your mole consumable, your storage costs and your other suppliers. And just to make sure that everything's dragging correctly, I'm just going to drag that formula and let's just choose a random one. Yes, it is. So all of these numbers here for this one, for instance, in 2000 year five, uh, these other suppliers, 10% uh, of half a billion dollars is what I spend on other suppliers. But I pay them after 14 days, so the money that is due to them sits in my account for 14 days, and I can use this $1.92 million to do whatever I want to within my organization for that time period. So I'm just going to repeat the same process here for my variable costs, and just drag the formula across and down, and just make sure that it's pulling correctly, and it is. And I do the same thing for my variable costs as well, processing, mining, shipping, and packaging. So now comes the interesting bit. Now I can calculate what is my total accounts payable at any given point in time throughout the year. So remember that this is the amount of money that is due to my external service providers or my even uh, uh, just people who have done work for me that is due to them, but is sitting in my bank account. So that would just be the sum total of all of these numbers here. So at any given point in time of the year, I owe people $13.48 million. And this money is sitting with me, and I can use it to do whatever I wish in my organization. So because I can use this money, I'm just going to reflect it as a positive because it's almost, if you think about it in another way, it's almost a form of funding. It's almost as though I have borrowed this money from my external service providers. So I have raised 13 million to do whatever I see fit in my organization. It's almost an inflow of capital. My accounts receivable We'll have to do this calculation looking at the revenue. Oh, revenue. Okay. So the revenue was calculated at $2.7 billion per annum. Now, let's assume that we are a relatively small player in the market and our off taker pays us at the end of every month. So we deliver on the first of the month, but we only receive payment at the end of the month. So all of this money sits in the hands of our off-taker or the people who we supply coal to or 
in this case copper. We supply them with a copper at the beginning of the month and they sit with our copper and they only pay us at the end of the month. So this is a drain for us because we don't get that money immediately after we make the delivery. So I'm going to reflect that as a negative. Okay. So out of $2.7 billion, we are losing the use of 30 days worth of that in every single month, basically, because we get paid at the end of the month. And because I'm going to drag that formula across, I'm just going to fix the column. So $221.92 million will sit with our external off-takers instead of being in our bank accounts. So in the first month, for instance, we deliver this copper, which is about, uh, if you split this up into uh, 12 months, let's as just assume that we deliver this copper evenly throughout the year, then what will happen is we've delivered 2 to 1.92 copper to an external off-taker, and then we have to wait until the end of that month to get paid. So we will have to uh, somehow come up with money to make new copper for the next month, pay our salaries, and just generally run the business while we're waiting for this external service provider to pay us. So we have foregone or we have given up the use of this $221.92 million while it's sitting in the hands of an external party. So I'm going to record it as a negative. And then the last thing that we'd need to take into account is also inventory. So let's just assume that after we have made copper, it still sits on our shelves for a week before we can ship it. So we need to calculate the value of this copper that is sitting idle on our shelves. And while it's sitting on our shelves, it's just idle capital. It's money that is tied up in copper and that money is not being used elsewhere in our business. So I'm going to reflect that as a negative as well. And what is the value of the copper that is sitting on our shelves? It's going to be the value of every single amount of money that we've spent to get that copper into a state where it is saleable. But we as yet have not shipped it, so I'm going to exclude shipping and packaging costs to calculate the value of that inventory. So basically, the value of the inventory that's sitting on our shelves for seven days is just going to be all of the fixed costs that we've incurred up to date plus all of the variable costs excluding packaging and shipping. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a shortcut. I'm just going to say, let's just exclude the sum. I'm just going to say D36 plus 80% of my variable costs, or let's say 70% of my variable costs. So this is the amount that I've spent in a year. So in order to convert that to a, a figure for seven days, I'm just going to multiply that by seven divided by 365. And that gives me the idea of how much my inventory that's sitting on my shelves waiting to be shipped and packaged uh, it gives me an idea of how much that is worth. I think I just made a mistake here. This doesn't add up to 100. Let's just make that 30% just to make the numbers add up. Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, so that gives me 80% of my variable costs have been spent to date. And then once I do package and ship it, then I'll spend this money. But I haven't spent it as yet. While the copper is sitting on my shelves, I haven't spent this money to date, so I can't record it as an inventory cost. So uh, I'm going to just drag that across after I've locked the relevant cells. I need to lock the column there. And I also need to lock this column here. So, in total, I can calculate my working capital requirement for this business. That'll be the sum total of all the amount of money that is in the hands of my customers, plus 
the capital that is sitting idle on my shelves, but it'll be offset by the amount of money that's sitting in my bank account that I have not as yet paid out to my external service providers. So I'm just going to add all of this together and note that my accounts payable is a plus because this money is in my bank account. The accounts receivable is a negative because it's in external bank accounts, external parties' bank accounts, instead of being in my bank account. And the inventory is idle capital, so it's a drain on my business because it's not money that I can use to pay salaries to do anything with while it's still sitting on the shelf, so it's a negative two. So after summing all of that, I would need to raise $224.9 million in order to just carry on business operations on a month to month while I'm waiting for people to pay me or while I'm waiting to ship my goods for sale. And it's going to be offset by the amount of money that's in my bank account that is due to external service providers. So I need about $225 million in this business to carry on ongoing operations. Another important thing to calculate is the change in working capital. So, assuming the business started operations in 2000 year one, in the first year, you would need to raise $224.9 million in the first year. So you can do this in the form of an overdraft facility at a bank, so you can ask them for a working capital funding facility or you can raise it via shareholders' equity. Shareholders can put in $225 million just to make sure that the business has enough cash on hand to fund its ongoing operations. That's what you'd need for the first year. Once you've raised this money, there's no change that's needed. Your working capital requirement is the same in year two as it was in year one. So once you've raised this money, you don't need to raise any more money. So the change in working capital requirement is zero. And so forth and so forth and so forth. It'll be zero. You don't need to raise any more money after you've raised this working capital facility. Let's, assu let's assume that this business comes to an end in year 10. So the business is uh, closed down effectively. The mine ceases operations in year 10. What will happen in the following year is that this money that was due to you from the last copper sale that you made, you will receive 221.92 in your bank account at the end of the first month of the following year. But you will also then need to pay out all your external service providers that you haven't paid, so let's say within two weeks, you'll have to make all of these payments. So you'd say 221.92 minus 15.78, and then you would eventually ship the stock and then sell it, and you'd receive money for the stock as well. So all of this tied up working capital would unwind at the beginning of the next year. So the net conclusion is, from the beginning of your business to the end of your business, the change in working capital should always sum to zero.